This is a continuation of my series of videos I've made dealing with my purchase of the RCF TT515. That's the top you see. Um, I made a couple of videos. You might want to go back and review those to get more information, but a quick summary. The RCF TT515 is, here's the shocking part, it's an expensive speaker for the size. It's $1,800. That price is mainly because the form factor, I believe. There is nothing out there with this kind of performance in such a small form factor. And you pay for things that are miniaturized in these in this day and age. I'm just thinking of my, uh, the Apple Watch. Everything is in there. It's such a small little device. It has a calculator. It has the internet. It has flashlight, everything. So that's, you're paying for a lot of the, the form fact, the size. So if you need that, this might be an option. A lot of people, I think RCF made this also for fixed installations. It's a professional type of speaker. It's in their TT line, fixed installations, maybe in restaurants, um, maybe in a band situation as a small fill speaker in the rear or to the sides or on the bottom of the stage, something that isn't, um, stands out. So it has its uses, but it's definitely not caught on with the DJ world. And I would say the, the main reason is it's max headroom, and that is 127 dB. That's really kind of um, not, not really enough for a dance situation in a wedding. It's more of a ceremony type of speaker, and at that kind of price, I don't see a lot of DJs purchasing this. But uh, the sound quality, if you're looking for the, the best sound quality out there and you're willing to pay the money, then I would have to say this is number one. I, I've compared it to QSC. I really enjoy QSC, the sound, house sound of QSC. I've also compared it to EV. Both speakers, super high end, uh, clarity on the high end. And I always thought that was the, the best out there. QSC, the benchmark, but I was wrong. This is, when you AB them to this EV compared to EV or the QSC line, this is the next level up. But I'm gonna tell you honestly that unless you AB them, uh, your audience is going to be very happy with the clarity of QSC or EV. So what can you get in comparison? Well, for $1,800, um, you're gonna save $800 just by going the, to the QSC 10.2, which is a louder speaker. So that's why DJs, I don't think they're uh, catching on with this particular speaker. But I bought it and I'm enjoying it for its, its audiophile quality, studio monitor quality in, at 127 EB at 22 pounds. And that is just not available in any other speaker. So I'm happy with the purchase. Of course, the size, and it has some really nice handles on the top and side. It's easily carried. It's pole mountable, and I'm gonna give you a sound demo. So listen to the clarity, and hopefully you'll agree. Of course, I'm not going to be doing any kind of A-B testing with the QSE. I did that in the past. So again, you need to go back and check some of those previous videos. Talking about previous videos, my last video, was this top RCF TT515 paired with the Sub 1. And that was an outside demo. It was very successful. It sounded incredible. But I'm gonna be honest, there, the Sub 1 did reach its limit before the TT515. It did bottom out. So in an outside situation, that's a very tough situation for a subwoofer. That's why I'm going to be de demoing the next step up and that is the Mighty Sub 2. Of course, you're dealing with a weight difference. The Bose Sub 1 is in the 40 pound range, and this is over 50, pushing 60 pounds almost. I believe it's 56 pounds. So that's the difference, but you have a lot more headroom, and the Sub 2, the spec is 129 dB. So that matches up perfectly with the, with the top here, which is 127, you have plenty of room. So let's hear how this sounds. And again, if you want to 
have the more portable unit, go with the Sub-1, but I would not recommend it really for outdoor gigging. Outdoor, you need the Sub-2, or you need something like an 18-inch subwoofer. Speaking about alternatives, the RCFTT line 515 has a matching subwoofer, and that is called the TT-808. It's very small, a little heavier than the Sub-1 at 44 pounds, very compact sub, dual 8-inch, 1,000 watts. And here's the amazing thing. The spec says, because I've never heard it in person, the spec says the RCF 808 goes up to 129, meaning it matches this sub too in a much smaller cabinet. Well, that's quite an achievement. That kind of breaks the laws of physics because usually physics tell us uh, low base and output of a subwoofer is directly correlated with cabinet size. Now, the sub-2 does go down lower. The sub-2 here goes down to 37 hertz. Uh, the 808 goes down to 40, which is a pretty standard uh, number in live sub field. So the sub-2 is stands out in that low number, 37 hertz, and probably because of the larger cabinet size. But I am not interested in the 808 because of the price. This sub-2 in front of you is $1,300. That's plenty of money for me. If you want the 808, which which does match up perfectly as far as EQ and high pass filter and everything else with the 515, it, that is $2,400. So that's almost $1,000 more than the sub two in front of you, meaning you can almost get two of these. So I say no thank you for the 808. Looking behind the scenes here, I have an all battery setup today which I really enjoy. I enjoy battery uh, mobile use. So today I'm running both the top and the bottom sub on one unit and it's called the EcoFlow Pro, 600 watts. And it's barely, uh, it's barely bothering this little EcoFlow. I believe it's, it's less than 15 pounds. So it has no trouble. The TT515 is a thousand watts. The sub two is a thousand watts. So this one, Power unit is running both units on 600 watts with no issues at all. Don't ask me the max run time because I haven't done that test yet. All I can tell you is I believe it would be about four or five hours at max volume. The higher the volume you go, the less run time you're going to have. The more base content you have, the less run time you're going to have. But I would say four hours easily on this EcoFlow Pro. Check it out on Amazon. I'll put the link down below. We're going to do a sound demo in a little while. So here is the mixing equipment I'm using. So there will be no YouTube copyright strikes. So we have, again, all battery powered. So the mixer and the keyboard is being run on a small... 300 watt Grant Maya AC external power source, again on Amazon, $180, easily powers these two units. Mackie Pro FX10, very portable mixer, one of my favorites. And today the star of the show is the Korg Minilog XD. Has a really nice sound and the live sound, the high end of this track should be very evident. It's going to be crystal clear. I've Everything is set on Unity. There'll be nothing on red as far as the speaker. And I have the subwoofer on a, an AUGS out. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have the subwoofer running from an auxiliary out. I like to do that because I like to have full control of my subwoofer and I can lower or raise it according to the track I'm playing. Many DJs do this method, and the other method that's more common is going from your mixer directly into a subwoofer, and then from the subwoofer going out into your top, dealing with high pass filters. That gives you a little more high end on your top, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, if you need more high, high end uh, volume, you probably need a bigger speaker. So here's what I'm talking about. Here is the control out.
So there's your sub two, and the sub two um, is only on 12 o'clock noon. I couldn't even get it anywhere near red. And again, for the track I'm playing, I don't need any more bass. So here we go again. I can raise the volume of the sub. I can cut the sub or mute it quickly, or I can max it out. You need to note that on the synthesizer, the keyboard, which is my source, the master volume is at 12 noon. On the mixer channel of the keyboard, that is also at 12 noon. So I have plenty of headroom if I need more in a live situation. Right now at Unity, the speaker is not even gonna be pushing it. So just keep in mind, we're gonna be getting nowhere near the max volume that this rig can produce. I don't like pushing it higher because of my, uh, I want to protect my hearing. I hope you heard that clarity. That topped out at 102 dB. And remember again, all my gains, my, uh, my level, master level, channel level for the keyboard was at 12 noon. I had all kinds of extra headroom I could have called on. So this was nowhere near the max of this system. But I hope you heard the clarity of that high end. That's what you're paying for. QSC, like I mentioned, EV, it will get as loud. Yes, they will produce 102. But the difference is, and I want to stress this, the main difference at 102, 103 dB, QSC is starting to sound harsh. I want to turn it down. It's hurting my ears. The audience is probably feeling the same way. It's just too loud. This speaker, you don't even know how loud it is. It doesn't sound that loud. It's like a hi-fi studio monitor at 102 dB or higher. That's what you're paying for. I, I will say of all the speakers I've owned, all the speakers I've tested, no speaker that I have heard sounds like RCF in this TT line. This is the highest quality. So if you're looking for the highest quality sound, you might wanna, you might be able to spend the extra money if you have the funds, but I'll say it again. Audiences uh, really don't care if they're dancing and drinking. Uh, they'll be very happy with an excellent QSC or EV. Let's wrap this up. So is this a column array killer? Well, this, this system, the Bose Sub 2, will outperform the Bose Pro 16 handily, the EV50, no problem, RCF J8. So if you want this kind of performance, you have to go up to the Bose Pro 32 column array. And I do have that system. I've never actually A-beat it, and I don't really plan on doing that in a video. It's too much hassle moving everything. 
but that would be a good test if someone else wants to do it. But that would be my closest competitor to this system. And they, the price is basically the same. $3,300 for the Pro 32 Sub 2 system. This is pretty much the same. And of course, you see that this is another way of setting this up. The Sub 2 can lie down horizontally. You can leave your speaker stand at home and just bring a speaker pole. Some people like the look of this better. It's personal choice, either way. So the Pro 32, how does it compare? Well, that has a 180 degree throw. That will fill a much wider space. This has the clarity of the Bose. Doesn't even come close. So it's really a different sound signature. Some people say they love the Bose sound, that mellow mid-range sound. They say it's non-fatiguing. And as a player, they can listen to it for hours and they don't get fatigued the high end. Uh, this system is so clean, I don't think uh, I would get fatigued with this sound of the RCF. I would just turn it down a little if I felt it was getting a little too much. But um, I think both systems would be very, very comparable. It really depends on the sound signature you like. So I'm not going to say this system is a Bose Pro 32 killer. No. And of course, the Bose Pro 32 has Bluetooth and the mixer built in. This one, as you saw, you need a mixer. No Bluetooth, very, there's no EQ on the, very professional. Professionals don't use Bluetooth. Um, so kind of a different application. I hope you enjoyed this video. Not many people are writing back that they're getting the RCF TT515. And I completely understand that the price is just astronomical. But there are a few people who, uh, if they're willing to spend the money, it's like, you know, the person who owns the Corvette Z06 and they have, they came into some more money and now they're going to the next level up, which would, what would it be? Ferrari, right? Okay. This is Bill. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is pretty much um, the top of my portable PA. Anything heavier, I don't consider portable. So it's, you're not going to see something much better than this. This or the QSC K8.2 over the sub two. Those are my those are my top portable systems. This was my hundredth video. I started one year ago. Uh, it's hard to believe that I put out a hundred videos. Hope you've seen some of them, and there'll be plenty more in the future. I have a, a lot of different ideas. Okay, this is Bill. Hope you enjoyed. Later.